and look at this we are live i do believe that we're live uh this is a very unusual place for us to have our everything is attitude show but al couldn't make it we couldn't figure out how al does it when he gets us on everything everything is attitude so my friend chris and i came up with this plan and we thought i'm sorry we didn't let you know soon enough but we tried our very best I didn't realize that Al couldn't make it until six o'clock. So we've only had two hours to cobble this together. Anyway, good evening, everybody. And I'd like to uh, introduce my co-host for this evening. You can't see her because we don't know how to put the thing together. However, she's, uh, she's on FaceTime on my phone, so you'll be able to hear her. Um, and um, if she's really nice, I will sort of hold up the camera and so. Do, in fact, let me do it now. I'm going to. I'm going to reach for. I'm going to. I'm just hoping this camera is on a tri. This uh, phone is on a tripod. Da, 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 da. We could do that. I could sit here and hold this for, for the whole night. <laughs> uh, I think your arm might get tired. I'm just. I can't even. If I'd have thought, I could have probably sort of rigged something up to prop it but anyway uh chris would you like to say good evening to everybody happy thursday everyone and uh welcome to everything is attitude with chris and we're going to be talking today about fun 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 right chris uh we wanted to i'm going to put you down in a minute <laughs> it's like uh, this it feels like amateur hour but this is fun. Is this fun, Chris, or what? Hey, anything that you can make do on a quick moment's notice is fun. <laughs> no. So this is one way that you can have fun. I'm going to put you down, Chris. Don't feel don't feel sad because I'm I'm putting you down. I'll pick you up again in a minute. <laughs> so, so that's so that's Chris, and it's the best thing we could do at short notice. If I'd have thought, I could have propped you up on something. But anyway, there we there we have it. So, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, having fun. And we know in these tough times, it's so hard sometimes to get ourselves in the right frame of mo mind to have that, uh, get the right attitude, because that's what this show is all about, getting the right attitude to have fun or to find fun. and. And there are so many people I know who um, who really feel, you know, well, we're stuck inside and, you know, we've got to get, the kids have got to do the homework and we're stuck here and on and on it goes. And um, how, can, how can we possibly have fun? And I was talking to Chris earlier on, uh, it, within this two hours of trying to uh, work all of this out as to how we're going to do this. And Chris, would you like to tell everybody what you said about uh, Anne Frank and if you can't hear her very well everybody just text it in go into the chat room text it in and she'll tell me if you're saying you can't hear her very well I'm going to I'm going to leave you on the table Chris but would you like to tell us what you uh, what you were thinking about Anne Frank earlier on well my husband used to be stationed in the Air Force and we lived overseas for a number of uh, years and we visited uh, the Anne Frank house, um, and it's a tiny space. And to think that Anne and her family were cooped up in that all that time under threat of um, death. Being discovered. Uh, being discovered in death. And to think, you know, we have so much more tools in our toolkit than she ever did and so much help that um i think we can all learn quite a bit from that that how much better off we are well she started writing a diary didn't she she uh, did which is how we know her and how we know about the family how many uh days months how long was she how long was she and her family trapped in this house can you remember I it, want to think it was something, 400 and something days, yeah. so, you know, a little bit over a year. Yeah, and uh, here we are, it's just been a couple of weeks of, of, of being in isolation, three weeks maybe maximum, and 
and I'm hearing everyone saying, oh, can't, what are we going to do? Pulling our hair out, it's driving us crazy. My daughter is is one of those until she won't say it to me anymore, but I point out to her, come on, you've got a garden, you've got a little boy you can play hopscotch with, you can, you can, uh, you know, sort of do treasure hunts, you can do all of that sort of thing. There are lots and lots of things that you can do, but what, how can we help all those people who are stuck inside and they're just so fed up there are only only so many card games right there are only so many games you can play samantha and reese played uh they played backgammon yesterday he's seven years old but he loves games he loves board games and so she showed him how to play backgammon yesterday what what are the ways uh chris that you would suggest how do we have fun even when we are struggling? I think uh, the first thing you can do is go into your mind of childhood. Now, everybody's childhood wasn't great, but the fact was that's when we're most playful, right? So, you know, I think about my childhood and playing with my siblings. We would build forts on the bunk bed or we would uh, make tents outside um, you know, obviously we had board games and the games of croquet and things like that. Um, but I was lucky. I had siblings. There's some people stuck at home right now who don't have anyone. That's right. And when I go back to my childhood, I was actually thinking about this earlier on. <coughs> Excuse me. And I have to say, I can never, ever remember my parents laughing. I can't remember them laughing together. I can't remember them laughing individually. I cannot remember them laughing with us as kids. Uh, we grew up in a, in a very somber house. Uh, if you put one foot wrong, and truthfully, you really didn't know what that foot was going to be. You didn't know what was right or what was wrong because you know the, the boundaries changed from moment to moment. Um, I can remember as kids, we used to, we had a, a garden, we had a small lawn out there, but I can remember uh, as kids, I, I might have been 10 or 11 years old at the time, and uh, you know, we would sort of, as kids, we'd run around or we'd sort of try, play different things. I remember sort of hanging a blanket over the washing line and, and make, t turning it into a tent or something. But I remember one day when I was about 10 or 11 years old, my father calling us in there. Of course, all of this was mostly instigated by my mother. And um, he, you know, he, he called us in and my mother was sitting in her chair. My father was sitting in his chair and they lined us up. And, they, and my father, I remember so clearly, I remember him saying, there's a footprint in the garden. Who did it? like it was the crime of the century and uh, of course who would know who put the footprint in the garden we were kids we were just sort of you know playing and what have you who would know who put the footprint in the garden anyway as we all finally he'd go upstairs sit at the top of the stairs talk about it amongst yourselves and the person who owned up come down and and, and, and tell us you did it and that was the, whatever there was going on and it really could be every time something as simple as there's a footprint in the garden or you know someone left a towel in the bath or so who knows what what crazy uh, things that they used to frighten us to intimidate us and boy did that uh, they they did um but my as and as 90 percent 99 percent of the time as we're walking out my mother would get her finger and she'd poke me between the shoulder, shoulder blades like this and we know who did it and uh, and my sisters to this day will actually when we all sit around they all look at me and say well n we never had it as bad as you did um uh, and because you know so often i was the scapegoat my for my mother really and uh, and then it was uh, you know right go upstairs take your pants off lean over the bed and wait for me to come up and sometimes he'd make you wait for five minutes and sometimes he'd make you wait for an hour and you'd sit you'd lay over the bed with your little bottom in the air 
and uh, be ter absolutely terrifying. You wouldn't dare to move. So we did not have that childhood full of fun and laughter. So when I became a mother, when, and I actually, it was a weird thing because I found my sense of humor uh, around the age of 17 or 18 years of age. And, uh, and I stopped being quite so shy and I stopped being quite so frightened of things. Of course, we never laughed in the, in the house, but outside and with people outside, I can remember, really, I remember finding my sense of humour. Thank goodness I found it because I tell you, without my sense of humour, I'm sure I would have, you know, hurt myself seriously from time to time uh, with different situations. But, um, you know, I determined uh, to develop that sense of humour and I determined when my daughter, when I had my daughter, I thought, there's no way... I'm going to ever bring this fear and this this uh, this awful atmosphere into my household, and so we had lots of giggles and fun and tickling and and I'd lay on the floor with them endlessly, uh, playing board games, tiddlywinks, snakes and ladders, you name it, we played it, and. Uh, Trust me, there were times when I really didn't want to do it, but I did it because that's what you do when you've got kids. And the same with Reese. And we laugh, we have fun. We're always giggling and laughing about something or another. And I think that, you know, Chris, I'll hand it over to you to, to ask what your opinion is. But my opinion is that a house without laughter and a house without joy it's not it's it's a, it's a building but it, you couldn't call it a house and you certainly couldn't call it a home i agree with you uh laughter basically changes the environment you're in and your mood and it's one of the healthiest things you can have around uh you've got a, a few people rosemary um in the comments section natasha's on and sissy's on and maggie's on they're all saying hello Hi. Well, with hello back, and we'd love to hear your comments, and we'd love to hear any questions you've got, and all that sort of thing. Because uh, Chris is paying attention to everything that everybody's writing about. We love to have company. Um, yesterday, last night, uh, I decided that we'd have a social uh, occasion with my students, and so uh, I invited them all to. Uh, dinner uh, they could bring their own food if they wanted to their own drinks um, uh, people some somebody brought a gin and tonic and somebody else brought wine and whatever I know Chris you brought you brought water with you but and we just sat around and there were uh, how many were there 10 of us or 12 of us or something we and we we did this on zoom so we could all see each other and um, it was fun because, uh, you know, uh, so often it's hard to get to know people. You, you might talk to, these are my students, so mostly we're talking about classroom stuff and we're talking about spiritual stuff. But, but I determined, I thought this would be a good idea to everybody to get to know each other if we had a social thing. And we learned some fun facts about each other. And uh, I'm going to give you one of my fun facts, which very few people know about. Um, and I actually, it occurs to me, actually, uh, this is something I used to do for fun. Uh, and I was talking to my grandson about it the other day. And it occurred to me, I remembered that when I was 16 year, years old, on my 16th birthday, uh, my church and I, it was called the Church of Christ, Saff Saffron Lane Church of Christ. If anybody out there went to Saffron Lane Church of Christ in 1962, 63, 64, that sort of era, please get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. And um, we had a drama group and uh, we were, it was, a, it was the, the Leicester, uh, Leicester City Drama Festival. It was the Youth Drama Festival and uh, in our and it was sort of people from all over the city there were loads and loads of different uh plays being put on it lasted a couple of weeks and we won 
uh, in our section, section B, we got first prize. And it was great because I was the star of the show. Uh, I was this little waif-like thing, and that's how I had to act like a little waif-like thing. But here, I'm going to show you, you won't be able to see it properly, but I'm going to show you my medal, which I searched out, found it today to show my uh, grandson. And I don't know if you can all see that, but anyway, that's my medal. And it says on that side, it says um, uh, City of Leicester. And then on this side, it says uh, Youth Drama Festival Winners 1962. And I remember it was my 16th birthday and we all had to go up on stage and be applauded and all the rest of it. And we each got our little first prize medal. So um, that was what I did for fun when I was sort of a teenager. But what do we do for fun when we're stuck inside? I'm a great one, and I talked about this a little bit this morning on, uh, on our show this morning. Um, I'm a, a great believer in uh, allowing your imagination to sort of take you places. And I encourage, <coughs> excuse me, I encourage my grandson, as I always encourage my daughter, to be, you know, sort of let your imagine, imagination take you. So yesterday I went to uh, Disney World. I, I, I know it's not open, is it? I went to Disney World. I went to Legoland. Uh, after that, uh, we went in the pool. Uh, the pool happened to be Reese's, well, actually his, his mother's bed because it's a nice big bed. We went to the pool. And we gazed up at the sky and we sort of saw all these clouds in the sky. And then what did we do? Oh, then in the afternoon, yesterday afternoon, I can't, I don't, you can't believe this, but we went in a, a rocket and we did some time traveling. So we had so much fun because our attitude was, and my attitude with Samantha, if it's raining, doesn't mean you, you know, you can't go out to play. It doesn't mean you have to be bored. And it doesn't mean that you have to, you know, sit in and read a book or or watch the TV. I know that so many parents nowadays, you know, you can't keep your kids happy. So let them play computer games or let them watch a movie on TV and so on. But I'd love it if you could all sort of have that recipe of let's dig deep let's dig deep within ourselves and let's find a way to 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 take off to do things that you know maybe some memories that we have uh, repeating the memories that we have is if they're good memories of, of, of us as children or you know just make new memories and i know that reese when he's older he will remember sitting on the sofa and me saying to him okay you're going to be the if the train driver or are you going to be the passenger and uh, you know and he takes hold of the wheel I'm the I'm the train driver I, I know that he's going to remember these things but I also know that it really gets his brain active and moving and motivated as it does with me too um, have you got any ideas Chris or any super uh, you know fun things that you can do uh, beyond the beyond the ordinary playing board games and and all of that stuff i was thinking about this in the last couple of hours since we spoke and, <laughs> yeah <laughs> um I, I, i'd rather just say a couple of things that i think my kids do that are really fun i have one son who's very much into um role playing games so they hop on um probably Zoom or one of the other video conferencing, each in their own homes, and there's a play, and they choose to be characters, and things are spontaneous, and there's, you know, there's a map of where they're supposed to go or what they're supposed to do, but they actually get into those characters and be those people, and, you know, you're talking, these are the millennials, and they have just such a grand time. Um, so is, husband, that, is that a computer game, then? No, actually, they will take the time to write out their own play or their own scenario. Oh, nice. And then just, they'll choose which character they want to be, and then they'll just all play this together. They, they just have the biggest smiles on their faces when they're doing this. Um, and then I think of my husband. He has some childhood friends, um, three of them, and they will sit at 
at the table and play this old, I think it's 1970s baseball game where there's a dice and they have their favorite baseball players and they pick teams and, you know, they they go all the, to the different bases. Now like they're, they they're, but, they're, they're do, but they're doing this, they're doing this, uh, what, using uh, Zoom or Ninja or whatever it is, they're, u- they're using some kind of an app that they can do this together, so... They're not all in the same house, are they, while they're doing it? They haven't tried it yet apart, but I'm saying those are the types of things that you can do apart. Right, right. Um, I've seen a lot of things on uh, YouTube lately where you'll have a father and his daughter, and they're playing piano and they're singing together. Or a father and a daughter are having a dance-off. Uh, they're just people are out there right now doing so many creative things and with each other and enjoying each other it's fabulous to watch and you know you can go out to parks and in some areas right as long as you stay sort of a good distance apart from other people am i right about that or not right about that I think for the most part, you are correct. It depends on the state you're in. And obviously, they're uh, recommending that people are wearing masks. Uh, I love the statement. Um, it's one of the European countries. I want to think Luxembourg came out with, if they wear their mask, I protect you and you protect me. So instead of feeling a victim, I have to wear the mask. They're basically saying, I've got your back. I think that's just wonderful. That's a good... That's... That is so great, isn't it? And I think there are so many people who do complain, who complain about, I don't want to wear this mask, I don't like this mask, blah, blah, I can't breathe in it, and so on and so forth. And instead of, and that's about attitude as well, isn't it? Having an attitude of, of positively understanding that it's not just you that you're protecting, you're protecting all of those people who are around you. Uh, who, uh, for all we know, as we walk outside, we might have that some nasty bug or another, um, and uh, it's a good thing if we if we're thinking this is not just for me, this is for us, and and I think that having an attitude of let's do the best for us, let's do the best for us as Americans, let's do the best for us as the British, let's do the best for us for each con- country, but let's do the best for us as a world as well let's make this world the safest place we possibly can and you know this is an opportunity uh, for us this is an opportunity because look at Anne Frank she decided you know I mean she had no choice her family had no choice if they were discovered they knew they risked death and they would have all been put to death or sent to the camps or some such I mean no doubt about it um, and, um, you know, she wrote a diary. She wrote about what was going on in her life. And have you read Anne Frank's diary, Chris? I absolutely did. It was one of those assigned books in school, but I think whether assigned or not, it's a book that everyone should read. Don't you think, though, I mean, she could have, it could have been the most miserable reading, but don't you think that she was so positive about things and she, she, she was able to see the positivity in the situation that they were in? I absolutely do. She is. She was a child leader. We can learn a lot from people like her. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to put you down because my arm's aching a bit here. Sorry about that. Uh, but it's working quite well, I think. What about, have we got any comments? Anyone want to contribute to any ideas out there everybody of as to you know what we can do we have we have this recipe already started a re- the you know we do recipes for life recipes for positivity and i think one of those the biggest ingredient is the ability to uh, have fun to bring fun not only into your life but into the lives of the people that you know and love and and um Samantha uh, is uh, on. She's on this um, uh, site house party. I think it's called. Uh, they do all kinds of stuff. You can go and join in. You can do things with other people. You can apparently Samantha says Reese loves it. I've not been on it yet, but he loves it. Samantha loves it. You can actually gather together with people where people have fun and they do things together and there are so many sites like that right now 
so if, do we have any comments or any suggestions from anybody out there or if we have somebody out there who really is struggling uh, let us know because maybe we can help you with a little bit of advice yeah on um on the chat rosemary uh maria Teresa has joined us and adriana has joined us and maggie's giving you a few different ideas um, <laughs> maggie is <laughs> never short of ideas she's fabulous <laughs> she says she was looking at crochet patterns and she has a cross stitch to finish then there are the weeds i'm going to assume that's for her garden um <laughs> i hope so <laughs> then she's got some cooking cooking fries for the hamburgers uh, sitting outside in the sun watching her grandson play with the dogs. They played Uno um, and Je uh, with her grandson and Jenna. And then she talks about seeing the video where the grandfather drives to his daughter's street, parks across the street, and then he and his granddaughter have a dance-off with the distance of the street between them. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, well, you know, it's, uh, you know, I talk about the things that I do with my grandson. Uh, let me be clear, and, uh, and I'm sure that it's the same for lots and lots of people. I'm on my own in this house. I do not have a husband. I, I have a puppy who sleeps 90% of the time. He's laid on the floor sleeping as we speak. He's not much company. I adore him, but he's not much company anymore. And like so many other people, I am by myself. However, what I do when I'm on my own, I like to read. I am knitting for the first time in years. I'm knitting a sweater for myself because every time I pick up needles and wool, I knit for my grandson or uh, on a rare occasion for my a daughter. Uh, I knitted her an iron jacket a couple of years ago. Uh, and um, for the first time, um, I, I finished a, a sweater for my grandson and sent that off to him a couple of weeks ago. So I thought, right, as I'm rummaging through all my wools and needles and all the rest of it, I found uh, that I'd actually started a sweater. And um, I just had done the bottom rib. And I'm thinking, now what was I meant to do with this? And I, I realised I probably didn't know, which is why I gave it up and just put it to one side. So. I just got on with that and I'm fin I am finished the back today. I still don't know whether I'm going to do a sweater, a jacket, or who knows what I'm going to do. It's still in the air in here because I actually don't use patterns. I make up my own patterns and so on. But it's a great iron sweater, lots of cables, so I do that. Uh, I'm writing children's stories. I'm also sort of, you know, I have a, a ton of things. Uh, my neighbour called me the other day and she, she was actually saying, you know, that she was she was bored and I'm thinking, geez, you know, I'm so grateful that I am the kind of person who I, I don't think I ever, I, I don't think I ever get bored. Uh, even when I was really sick years ago, uh, jigsaw puzzles are something that I, I used to do because I was not well enough or healthy enough to go weed the garden or do any exercise of any kind so jigsaw puzzles reading writing uh so many things and but if you if you're not a writer if you say to yourself i can't write i would not know how to write i think pretty much everybody would be able to write a diary so that's one of those things that you can do but i think you really have to dig deep inside of you to figure out you know what can what can I do so that I'm not going to be sitting here twiddling my thumbs and and being bored so projects I think so you know find pro a project that's another ingredient in the bowl so having fun being able to dig deep find fun having an imagination throw imagination into the bowl um, find a project or three or four or however many uh these are the times when you know you know you've said to yourself oh gosh that wall really needs a coat of paint now's the time to do it go and do it you know or uh, i wish i had time to make or to do or to be in how many times when we're so busy and everything is normal we're all out there and we're busy and we're going to work or we're doing things how many times have we said oh 
Gosh, oh, if only I had, if only I had, if only there were 25 hours in a day, right? Chris, if, only, if only there were 30 hours in a day, guess what? We've got it. It's here. We've got it. And it's a gift. So I think that having an attitude of being able to look at this time as a gift rather than as a, rather than as a chore, rather, rather than getting down about things force yourself sometimes we do have to force ourselves but force yourselves into doing something that's positive i had written a short list of things um you know some of us probably have a musical instrument maybe a guitar or a trumpet or a violin or something sitting in the back of our closet you know at one time it interested us maybe it's take it out dust it off show it to the kids maybe the kids will want to learn how to play something like that um my husband actually is a guy who takes out his old baseball cards and he writes away for autographs just to you know be able to touch one of the names of the, the players and have that for posterity there's also um you know reconnecting with art drawing sketching painting remember when you would do those art classes at the farm oh yes well Yes, when we were at the farm, we used to have uh, every October, the first week in October, we'd have a four day, a four day weekend. Actually, it would start on Friday night and it would go through Monday and occasionally through to Tuesday, where I'd sort of we'd have the students come up and and do stuff. And one of those days, uh, we used to have art. Now, look, I'm not an artist. I don't claim to be an artist. However. I can see, I can imagine, I can create in my mind and I knew what I wanted all of those, we used to have loads of people, everybody, so many people used to come to that art class and we had tables and tables and tables and, and easels that stood on the tables and uh, you know we had paints and crayons and all kinds of things and even people who had never ever done this before would have a go and some of the stuff was brilliant and in fact most of it was brilliant and uh, I just encourage people to uh, to visualize the energy that was within them and to visualize what what they thought their soul might look like and uh, and some of the stuff that came out of there was just stunning and amazing from people who had never even sometimes never even picked up a paintbrush and can you remember chris the one of the most interesting things was that uh the more uh of an expert artist you were the less you were able to let go and and visualize and do this uh, creative stuff so people who had never picked up a paintbrush before would would create the most amazing things and create what you know this sort of what they saw their soul look like and we had well, we had some amazing times didn't we we really did have some great times yeah there were there were th those classes were the ones that you ran out of space so many people wanted to take I them i know it, actually we could have run a week long art class taught by me never having been to art class i can't really draw i am a i can create i can design i can do all that stuff but i'm not an artist and i have friends who are artists who are amazing artists and you know i just they wow me but what i can do is i can help people to visualize so that they can be the artist so that that my talent was not the art itself but encouraging people to dig deep and to find the good stuff. And this is what we're suggesting uh, today is that we dig deep, just dig deep, find the humor, find the fun, uh, get that mixing bowl going, throw all of these ingredients in there and hopefully be inspired what we're talking about today. More comments or questions, Chris? Let's well, Sarah and Agnes have joined. Hi. Agnes, Agnes says, hi, good to see you. Loved your books. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm reminded of, um, I have a couple of nieces um, who one night brought all the aunts and uncles together to unravel the project they had been working on. And what they had been doing with some friends they made over the summer was they took a bunch of videos and strung 
them together to create a play. So they wrote their own play. They dressed in their own costumes. <laughs> and then they had popcorn and this big unraveling. And they knew how to splice these videos together to wow. basically make a movie. Oh, they were so proud of themselves. And for a full week, they were engaged. So, you know, think about that, moms and dads out there. Yeah, I'm not sure I could do the video part of it, but I could certainly, I mean, Reese and I, we, we play all the time. He'll be the train driver, I'll be the passenger, or he'll be the soldier and I'll be the, the villain, or uh, he'll, I'll be the monster and he'll be the hero of something or another. You notice that I'm always the villain one way or another. <laughs> I, <coughs> I always play the lesser parts. He can be the pirate and, and uh, this sort of thing. And, you know, when you can, if you get your family together and just, you know, do something like that and just have fun with it, even if it's only half an hour to an hour and you sort of, because you end up rolling about laughing and finding fun. And in those times, of course, there are very often those people who just, they don't want to play or they just, you know, you know, there are certain people who just love to be miserable. And what we have to do with those people who love to be miserable, we either have to laugh them out of it, cajole them out of it, or move past them and just have fun despite them. Because we shouldn't at this moment in time be letting anybody pull, in, pull us down or bring negativity into our lives. So we have to work really hard to ignore the people who are determined to be negative and just be positive the best we can be. Did you ever play that game as a child where you sat across from someone and you just looked each other in the eye, not a stare, but you just looked each other in the eye, trying to see, to see who's going, going to laugh look away to see, or who would make to, them laugh? Or who would blink first. This is what yeah. we used to do. You'd stare at your sister like this, you know, and and it, whoever blinks first lo is the loser. Not that anything happens to the loser and not if you're the winner you get a prize i tell you what else we used to do which you might you at home you might want to try this we would now my sister and i would would do it in bed uh sort of because we had to share a bed so uh she would get her finger and she'd draw on my back and i had to guess what yeah. it was she was drawing oh uh, it could be a word or it could be you know sort of just a, a pattern of some kind and then then uh we would turn over then i would do it to her and so on and you can do that you know even if you're sitting on the sofa you turn around and you can do it to them and then they do it to you and it's it's fun and you can end up really laughing about the really the most ridiculous things let's have some more comments or questions chris no comments or questions right now um but I can think of um, a couple of more things we did as kids. Uh, especially my mom, she had seven kids, so right, she she always had to keep us uh, entertained when we were, if we should ever have said we're bored. But she would take um, one of those flat pans and she'd have water in it, and then she would find whatever leftover oil paint she would have, and she'd dribble different colors on top of the water, and then she'd have us all cut out, you know, what leftover pieces of cardboard and we'd lay it down and, you know, voila, beautiful bookmarks we'd have or different types so of things. So all the designs would be, the design of the oils on the water, would you just dip your cardboard in, bring it out and, and there you'd have your patterns. That's a good idea. So many, so many, many good ideas. We're only going to be on for just a few more minutes so if you do have comments or questions, now is the time, everybody, to get them going. And you, here's the rule. If you want to, it's like I said to someone the other day who, when I, suggest, when I suggested, uh, you know, that we were going to have a, a dinner, that everybody could come to my house, so to speak, and uh, we'd sit around and we'd chat and, you know, what is it? that Americans say shoot the breeze is that right is that right <laughs> yeah. uh, and we just find out more about each other and get to know each other better and uh, one person said to me well are you going to be there and I said of course I'm going to be there it's my dinner and um, 
well, are, are you going to be there? She, she, this person asked me three times and I said yes. And I got the impression that she really thought it would be better for everybody if I weren't there because she felt that then people could say what they felt without my intimidating them. Uh, but it it, it's, it wasn't a, a, a get together so everybody could moan and groan and it certainly wasn't a get together where people could be termites it was a get together so we could all get to know each other better that includes me and so I basically said and this is the deal I'm going to invite you to my house which I'm doing with all of you I'm inviting you to come into my home I'm inviting you to come into my house which is great, but if you don't want me to come into your house, I won't come into you. Won't come into mine, and it's that simple. You've got to join in. Imagine that you're sitting at my dinner table, right? Uh, you're not going to sit there and say nothing. Well, I hope you're not going to sit there and say nothing. You're going to say this food is fantastic. You're going to say, "Wow, you know, how did you make this dessert?" Or you're going to say something about the conversation. So come on, everybody, let's get going. Let's hear from you before we close. Chris, you're sitting at my table tonight. What do you have to say? Well, first off, I just want to say Agnes is on. She said it's 2.40 in the morning there in the Netherlands. She's trying to have fun there on her own. Good for you, Agnes. Well, here's the thing you can do. When we finish doing this, go onto YouTube and look for my YouTube channels. We have a, we have, everything is attitude. We have a, what else do we have? We have the spirit world sees all we have we even i even have a cooking show i've not done much on it recently except decorate christmas cake with reese uh but uh go in and check out what we've been doing we also have our hands around the world healing sessions on wednesday afternoons and they're all up on youtube so look you could have a youtube fest with me doesn't that sound brilliant <laughs> and um you know you can even though we have our healing sessions and we have these things even though they're live once they've gone out live you can still enjoy you don't have to uh, watch these things live and people often say to me well you know when you do your healing sessions rosemary don't we need them live and the answer is no you don't need them live because it's a guided guided meditations and you can do it with me whether it's live or whether it's recorded it's just the same and it will work just the same so i think rosemary since that we're wrapping up the time here you've got your class following this yes. um i wrote down what you said for your recipe um i had let's dig deep within ourselves yeah let's do the best for us as a world yes the ability to bring fun into the lives of the people you know and love. Yes, I think that's the most important there, yeah. Uh, what can I do? Find a project. Uh, use your imagination and find the humor. Did I miss anything? No, I think that's good. And finding a project, I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Would you like to know what my project is for tomorrow, Chris? Absolutely. I'm going to make flatbread. My daughter is appalled. She says, but that will make you fat. And I said, well, you know, I'm not going to eat all of it. I'm, only, I'm going to make it and then I should put, put some in the freezer. Uh, but, you know, I would suggest if it's a project that you're looking for, find something you maybe never did before. Not that I never made flatbread before, but find something that you never did before. <coughs> My daughter today, what did she do? She I can't remember now what she did and uh, oh she played a backgammon it was yesterday with Reese and she said I'm not sure I can remember how to play mum but I remember you and Auntie Madeline playing which we did I used to play with my sister all the time and I said go on YouTube or Google it or because you can find anything these days and if you don't have a computer make sure you've got plenty of paper pencils crayons you name it just just have fun just enjoy yourself and have fun whatever it is you do or if you just want to stretch out how often do we can we find the time to stretch out and read to our hearts content without anybody disturbing us doesn't that sound like fun 
So thank you, thank you, Chris. We do have to. Are there any more comments? I will ask one more time. Anything else? Does anybody have to add to this? Not right now. Okay. We do hope that you've enjoyed being with us and and sharing my home with me. We we really love the fact that you're all there and you're all listening and that you're following and supporting which is lovely we do apologize because you probably got a notice that said we weren't going to do this and then now all of a sudden you got another notice saying guess what we are doing this um so uh we are going to endeavor to do our best to 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 give you more notice the next time around uh but in the meantime I have to go to class. Chris has to go to class. I've noticed something's coming up on the screen, Chris. I don't know if you're seeing people are now. Of course, it's always the same. People are commenting. Yeah. As I'm saying goodbye, people are commenting. Anything else that we have to add? Anybody saying anything at all there? Well, Karen says, someone asked me recently if I've been bored being at home, and I have found many things to do. Movie watching, knitting, contacting friends, coloring, reading, sitting in the sun. And then Agnes says, great, I love connection. Uh, do good for me and, and so for the world. Exactly. If you want to know also what we're doing for the world, yesterday I did an exercise on our hands around the world, healing hands around the world, where I actually likened the energy that we're going to use for the world as literally creating a, what in England we call a candy floss. I think in America you call cotton candy. Uh, a sort of building that energy and spinning that energy into a cocoon around this world of ours to make it safe. So please check that out. If you want to know more about me, you can email rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com if you want to know more about the books, the workshops, the, the teaching, the you name it, whatever it is that's out there, please email me, rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. Uh, Chris, is there anything that you'd like to add before we go? Have fun. <laughs> yes, there you are. You have it. Uh, please, 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 all of you, thank you for joining us. Please have a very, very blessed uh, rest of the night and have a very blessed and a wonderful, fun-filled, fun-packed, Believe me, no matter how strapped you are, no matter how much on your own you are, believe me when I tell you, if you put your mind to it, you can have so much fun. So have have fun, 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 please. Uh, and uh, have a very blessed uh, weekend. And we shall see you next week. We shall see you on Wednesday afternoon with our healing hands around the world. We shall see you on Thursday with our um, The Spirit World Sees All. And uh, we shall also see you next Thursday. Uh, regardless of who the host is, I shall see you next Thursday with our Everything Is Attitude. So keep posted. And again, email me, Rosemary at Rosemary Altea. And please, everyone, have fun and have a very, very, very blessed rest of the week. <laughs>